In tonight's headlines, Tatlo Asia decides not to seek a multi-million dollar subsidy after a no-show by Lionel Messi angers fans. Canberra hits out after a court in Beijing hands down a suspended death sentence to Australian writer Yang Jun. And the Palestinian death toll in Gaza climbs with children wounded in Israeli attacks treated on hospital floors. The organizer of the Lionel Messi Friendly has decided not to seek a $60 million subsidy from the government after the much-touted match ended in a farce. Jeers rang out across the Hong Kong Stadium yesterday when the Argentine football legend failed to play for his team, Inter Miami, against an SAR side. Fans who splashed out up to $5,000 each were angry and disappointed. Tatler Asia, which organized the showpiece, said it had expected Messi to play. On Sunday, before kickoff, the official team sheet, a list of the players who are available to play in the game, showed Lionel Messi and Luis Suarez as substitute and therefore fit to play. Lamounier said Kettler was informed during halftime that Messi could not participate due to injury. Tatreja subsequently spent the second half urging the Inter Miami CF leadership to instruct Messi to address the fans to no avail. I fully understand and share the disappointment of local and overseas fans and stakeholders. Tatler did not respond to questions on whether it would offer refunds. Scorn and derision continued to be directed at football legend Lionel Messi and his teammates as they left Hong Kong for Tokyo. Sports Minister Kevin Yeun said the government's agreement stated that Messi had to play for at least 45 minutes subject to fitness and safety considerations. When the second half began without Messi, we immediately follow up with the organizer Tela Asia, requesting them to liaise with Inter Miami to arrange Messi to play as soon as possible. About 10 minutes before the match ended, the organizer Tela Asia confirmed that Messi could not play. We therefore immediately request them for, to explore other remedies, such as Messi appearing in the field to interact with his fans and receiving the trophy. Unfortunately, this did not work out. Disgruntled fans demanded a refund when it was clear that their idol would not be kicking a ball. This messy affair is becoming a hugely international and messy affair. Roundtable lawmaker Tian urged Tatler to give ticket holders all their money back. The Consumer Council has received 38 complaints so far. The watchdog urged fans to hold on to their tickets and receipts. Maisie Mock, Cable News. The Jimmy Lai National Security Trial has heard that editorial decisions at the now-folded Apple Daily were affected by how much the media tycoon felt about certain issues. Former associate publisher Chen Pui Man said section heads, along with former executive editor-in-chief Lam Man Chong and editor-in-chief Ryan Law met every day to decide on the lead item and layout of the newspaper. Chen said Lai ordered her to focus on the concerns of businesses towards a proposed amendment to the extradition law. Chen also said Lam was her right-hand man who helped her produce the newspaper and took over when she was on leave. A court in Beijing has handed a suspended death sentence to Australian writer Yang Jun, who's also known by his pen name Yang Heng Jun. The sentence could be commuted to life in prison after two years. China born Yang was detained when he traveled to Guangzhou in 2019 and accused of spying for Australia. 
Details of the allegations have not been disclosed. Yang's trial was conducted behind closed doors three years ago in Beijing. His sentencing was announced today. Foreign Ministry spokesman Wang Wenbin emphasized that the court held the trial strictly in accordance with the law and fully protected Yang's litigation rights. But the sentence angered Australia, and China's ambassador was summoned by the foreign minister. The Australian government is appalled at this outcome. We have consistently called for basic standards of justice procedural fairness and humane treatment for Dr Young in accordance with international norms and China's legal obligations. Australia will not relent in our advocacy for justice for Dr Young's interests and well-being, including appropriate medical treatment. Young's sentencing has cast a cloud over Sino-Australian ties, which have been thawing only recently. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese travelled to Beijing last November to meet President Xi Jinping as the two major trade partners tried to put their spat behind them. Their relations turned frosty when Canberra demanded an inquiry into the origins of COVID, prompting Beijing to retaliate by targeting Australian imports. Janice Lowe, Cable News. Palestinian children injured in an Israeli airstrike on the city of Deir al-Bala in central Gaza had to be treated on the floor as the hospital they were rushed to was seriously overcrowded. 30 people were killed and dozens wounded in the attack which flattened a mosque and a residential building. The Palestinian dead toll rose to over 27,300 after another 127 fatalities occurred in the past 24 hours. Aid is trickling into Gaza through the Rafah crossing in the south but deliveries could soon dwindle. Western donors have suspended funding after Israel claimed that some United Nations relief workers took part in the Hamas raid that triggered the offensive in Gaza. Meanwhile, U.S. broadcaster CNN is facing a backlash from its own staff who claim that they have been asked to take a pro-Israel stance and overlook the Palestinian perspective. U.S. warships have launched more attacks on Houthi targets in Yemen, raising tensions in the volatile Middle East. The Americans said their latest action stopped the Houthis from firing missiles at vessels in the Red Sea. But the Houthis vowed to continue their campaign, which is aimed at stopping Israel's offensive in Gaza. Britain is helping its U.S. ally target the Houthis after American warplanes struck bases belonging to pro-Iran militias in Syria and Iraq. When three Americans were tragically killed, uh, the president ordered a firm and serious response, which we are now, uh, which is now underway. It began uh, with the strikes on Friday night, but that is not the end of it. The president is determined to respond forcefully to attacks on our people. The president also is not looking for a wider war in the Middle East. The Monetary Authority is reportedly reviewing its mortgage stress test that banks are required to conduct to ensure that home buyers in the world's least affordable housing market can repay their loans. This comes as the number of negative equity cases reached a 19-year high of 25,000 at the end of last December. The city's de facto central bank was asked by lawmaker Ronick Chan if there would be a review to pave the way for more people to buy their homes. In September of last year, we have changed that from three percentage of stress testing from three percent to two percent. And whether it's residential premises or commercial premises, we have made adjustments. We'll base our review on global economic factors. If necessary, as said, we'll make adjustments.
Lunar New Year begins this weekend, but the Chinese community in Nigeria welcomed the dragon much earlier. A variety of food was available for celebrants, which included Chinese expatriates and Nigerians. I miss China, but also I think now the Chinese Spring Festival not only belongs to China, it's a celebration for the whole world. So even I'm in Nigeria, I can feel the possibility of Nigerians. I can feel that uh, I'm in the second hometown in Nigeria. Guests at the event in Nigeria's commercial capital, Lagos, were treated to a traditional show, followed by a fireworks display.